Welcome back to the Getting Started with TypeScript series. My name is Dan Wallin. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And in this video, we're going to focus on using classes in TypeScript. Now, what I'm going to cover is what a class is, how you could use it in some of the different class members. Specifically, we'll focus on properties, constructors, and functions. But as we do this, I do want to mention up front that classes are a little bit subjective. Some people use them all the time. Some people don't like them at all and just prefer to use functions. It really depends. If you come from a .NET background or maybe Java or something along those lines, object-oriented, then classes are pretty comfortable to you. If you come from more of a functional programming background, then you may not like classes. So my take on it is use the right tool for the right job. If classes work for your scenario, great, go for it. Even if you don't use them right away, knowing about what they offer is good, and that's what we're gonna cover here. So let's jump on in. So to create a class, all we have to do is type the class keyword, and then I'm gonna create a class called customer, and this is gonna be a, a kind of base class, foundation, if you will, that we can then build on top of if we want. Now, classes can have members. One of those members can be properties. So for this one, let's say that we have a first name, a last name, and maybe an age, something like that. And then classes can also have a way to initialize them and pass data in, and that's called a constructor. So we can type the word, the literal word, constructor, like so. And then we could just do this, but it wouldn't buy us a lot. This would be an empty constructor, now down here, we could say let customer equal new customer. That would actually call into there. But what if we want to pass the first name, last name, and age? Well, we could put that in as parameters for the constructor. So we could say f name is a string, l name is a string, and I'm just shortening these a little bit, number, and then we can map them up to our properties. And the way we do that is this, gets us to this instance of the class once it's running. Okay, so this dot, notice I can get to the members of the class. So I can get to the age, the first name, and the last name. So I'm gonna quickly map these. Okay, and we're done. But there's an easier way to do this, a much easier way. If you ever wanna pass in different members like this and just all you want to do is map them to existing properties, then there's a little cheat you can do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this for now. I'm going to copy and paste down so that you can see the difference. And let's call this refactored customer or something like that. Now, I'm going to actually delete the properties. I'm going to delete all of this, and we're going to let TypeScript generate the properties for us. So I'm going to say first name and last name first off. But what I'm gonna do is I need to decide, are these public? Can anyone get to them that uses this class? Or are they private to the class? Only the class can get to them. Well, these are probably public. So we're gonna put the public keyword on front of all three of these. And now watch what happens here. If I say let customer equals new refactored customer, now notice I can pass in first name, last name, and age. Okay, so we'll pass in John Doe. John is 45, we'll say. And now if we did console.log, customer.age, and we run this, we should see 45. So let's go ahead and run this. We'll come and open this up, and there we go, we get 45. Now, what's unique about this is let's go to the JavaScript that's generated, and you're gonna notice that for the top class, we only have the different members that you saw earlier, okay? We initialize them, and then we map them. So it's actually generating all that code. Now, the refactored one's a little bit cleaner, you'll notice. We have the constructor, first, last, and age, but notice that it just directly maps to these different properties. It actually generates the properties for us. Pretty cool, actually. Now, the reason that it's just outputting classes, by the way, is because we're targeting ES2017. If I switch this to way back days, ES5, it converts classes to functions. But if you're targeting modern browsers, you can usually go with ES2017 or possibly higher. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Let's rename this to customer. 
And now we're kind of off and rolling here. Now you can have other things though. And I'm going to go ahead and I usually do something like that. You may want to wrap these. A lot of people will do this just to make it a little bit easier to follow. Totally up to you. The other thing we can have is functions. So we can have properties and we can either physically define those ourselves or we can let TypeScript do it by putting public or private in front of the constructor parameter. But let's say that we have a function, let's just call it place order, and it takes, uh, I don't know, a product ID, something like that, which is a number. And then in this case, I'm just gonna log the product ID to keep it quick and easy. That's all you'd have to do. Now, if you're new to this, the important thing, you do not put the function keyword when it's inside of a class. And I should have mentioned at the beginning, everything I'm doing here for the most part, aside from the public and private, this is all ES 2015. These features came out when kind of the most major version of the JavaScript language came out, which was quite a while ago now. But now we could go ahead and say customer.placeOrder. We need to pass in, there's the guardrails coming up, the uh, order ID or product ID. So we'll just make up one here. And now we can run it. And there we go. There's the age that was written out right there. And there's our place order. And that's the main members you're going to find in a class. Now, the last thing I want to show you is you can leverage inheritance. I mentioned at the beginning that customer could be a base class that we can build on top of. So we could actually come in and make a class, and let's just call it gold customer. It's one of those customers that has a lot of, you know, frequent flyer miles type things. But what I'm going to do is say extends customer. Now, if I just do that alone, we can now say gold customer is new gold customer. And notice that I now need to pass in first name, last name, and age, yet I never wrote the constructor here. Now, I'm going to show you something you may have to do, though, if you do put a constructor. But for now, let's go ahead and leave this. So we could just copy right here. Let's change this to Jane Doe. Jane is 38, let's say. Really matter. And then we'll console.log um, gold customer dot age and we will call gold customer dot place order. All right, and let's go ahead and run this now. And there we go. There's our 38 for age, there's our five for the place order. So notice we just inherited that functionality down. Now, a little gotcha on this. If I do put a constructor like this, it's gonna go red. And the reason is, if you put a constructor, then it still needs to call this constructor in what would be called the base class, customer in this case. Now, normally what you'd probably do there is maybe you wanna tweak things a little bit, but you could just call super like this. But notice when I mouse over super, it expects three parameters. So if I don't want them to pass in anything at all for gold customer, I would have to default these. Maybe do something like that. Now, notice this is red because now you don't pass anything. And the way I would set the properties in this case would be gold customer dot, and then I could say age equals 38, and I could do the same for first and last name. Now, if we run it, notice we still get the 38 here. Now, I'm not saying you would want to do it this way, but just know that if you ever extend a base class and if you put a constructor, you have to call super. Super represents your base class, and that is the constructor right there. That's the supers constructor, and that's actually what we're calling. Now, there's a lot more we could go into, but that's some of the fundamentals of getting started with classes in TypeScript and some of the tricks you can do, such as adding public to have the auto-generated properties. Really nice feature I use all the time. Not appropriate for every situation, of course. Use it wisely, but there you go. So please like and subscribe so you know about future videos in this series, and we'll see you in the next video.